What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to How's It Going to End. How you doing? That's great. Today, I'm joined by a very special couple people from the cast of Black Summer Season 2, Justin Chu Carey and Bashir Sylvan. How you guys doing? Good. How you doing? Good, good, right. good. Um, I'm, I'm, thank you so much for joining me. I, uh, your episode of this season is, is my favorite amongst them. And it, it's, it's a very well-performing season, which is very rare, I think, for a, for a show, especially a zombie show. But your episode really kind of stands out for me. And uh, it's really cool to be able to talk with you guys. Um, I'm a huge fan of the show. Back in, in It feels weird to say that season one came out in 2019 because over the last year and a half, everything feels like time just stretched out. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and I've been I've been campaigning for this show for so long. I'm I'm telling everybody it's this it's this zombie show on Netflix. I know I know you don't want to think about zombies because The Walking Dead. I'm telling you, trust me, get into it. You're gonna you're gonna like it. And I didn't even know until now, or until I guess just before the second season dropped, that there was a second because the first kind of wrapped up fairly well. You know, you could have ended it there, and yeah. they took this great like step forward with going into the winter and into a whole new terrain. So I guess uh, first, first above anything is like, how are you guys, what was your, how much are you into the zombie genre before joining Black Summer? Uh, well, I'll go first. I, I, uh, <laughs> I was not into the zombie genre. Uh, you know, it was, yeah. you know, it was, uh, yeah, I'm kind of a, I've actually always loved werewolves. <laughs> it's kind of always been <laughs> which is strange in and of itself but uh yeah but you know since since doing black summer you know um i hadn't i i someone told me i had to watch 28 days later before i started shooting so i watched that because i hadn't seen yeah. it before. um and what else did i i watched um uh world war z yeah. um you know so just some of the some of the classic ones uh just to kind of immerse myself and and then I got it, you know, I was like, oh, this is like, this is a really fun kind of genre world to, to dive into, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. What about you, Bashir? Man, for me, 28 days later, mess it up for everybody, really. Yeah. <laughs> um, once I saw it, because, you know, usually zombie movies, they're really slow, and I never was able to finish any of them from before. And then 28, day, 28 days later showed up, and it was the fast zombies. Mm -hmm. And and that changed my entire view. And because of that movie, I never watched anything else. Because yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, they're not moving fast enough. I'm good. <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty good one to, to jump no, off. No, it, 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 it set the yeah. standard in such a high way. But not only that, but the storytelling was so great, too. Mm -hmm. You know, there was the first film that really tapped into um, actually how we would naturally react to some phenomenon like this. Whereas the other ones, it was always like this kind of fantasy world, but you, the threat wasn't real, but 28 mm -hmm. days later made it real. Especially when I saw the brother that was chained in the back and he had the eyes red and he's like, uh, uh, and I was like, I could feel the anger and the racial tension. Yeah. It was beautiful. <laughs> that's that's exactly I, that. think, I think there's a difference too between like, there's like the fantasy zombies that I feel like are kind of almost more in the world of like Dracula and like mm -hmm. you know horror werewolves and all that stuff and then there's like the virus zombies right i think yeah and then and that's more of what this show is that's what 28 days later is and exactly I think for me that's that's a little bit more scary you know? and i am legend i am legend too oh, that was yeah. the one. yes i was like, i was just yeah. i was just talking to someone about how uh i've always been more interested in zombies that aren't just like reanimated corpses but it's a sickness you know Right. And whether it's it's like in um, in I Am Legend or even in, in uh, like video games like The Last of Us, where it has stages to, to infection. And that was always my favorite thing. And, and the first episode, you follow that one zombie, that, that one woman that just gets hit by the car. And it's like that. It's an airborne sickness. So you die anyway. You get it. And you follow the stages of it happening in, in the brain and the, the expulsion of like the blood out the nose, which gives it an, in, an instant distinct zombie look i don't think you'll find any other zombies that have that like instant blood coming down the face and it's like a rage thing so that that really is a is a great pairing um well i know and i think i think the sickness also makes it real right i mean especially yeah. in a pandemic you know we yeah, see absolutely. how fast a, a virus 
can spread, you know? And Absolutely. Killing people. It's like almost just a tweak off of like, yeah. this, you know, the uh, Corona's killing people. Exactly. Like, you know, all it needs is someone to come back. Yeah. That's it. Everyone has been watching all this zombie stuff, preparing for that. And little do we know this thing that we knew nothing about completely put everything on halt. Yeah. Um, that's what I also loved about uh, the, the beginning in particular of, of Black Summer is you get into this, the military stage of everything. You get to see how the military is trying to handle everything. And I put a spoiler warning at the beginning of this video so we can kind of just say whatever. When you okay. get to the end of season one, and the military kind of just flat out like, yeah, we have nothing. Everything's dark. No one knows what's going on. Yeah. It's such a, an eerie kind of uh, realism to it. Because it's like, this is a, it's a threat that no one ever really, as much as we have all these, this fiction and, and uh, sources, you know, of being like, how, you, you, you destroy the brain or whatever. I think that when it's like a genuine thing to come across, it's, it, it'll put everything to a halt. I mean, I, I think that's you know the the genius of of John Himes, our our creator showrunner. He, you know, I remember the first season. I believe I could be wrong. I believe the the last episode was a little bit more um, like like they wanted like hordes of zombies to showing mm -hmm. up and and like the military to be like like a a much bigger like battle scene. Yeah, and then I remember him making the decision like you know what I think. I mean, I mean, because he was developing as we were going along, as we were shooting, and he was just, and he's such a less is more uh, creator and and director. And so I remember him making the decision of of like, you know what, it would be scarier if there's just nothing, <laughs> you know. And, uh, and in fact, we and I actually didn't know that, you know, with Anna running up to, um to Rose at the very end, you know, we shot it as her running up to Rose and then them hugging and reuniting and me and, you know, they had cameras on me and um, and uh, Christine's character, like, you know, reacting to it or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I thought that's how it was gonna be. So when I saw- And then that, they cut it at just that. Yeah, I was like, ooh. That's like, that's a show that has balls to be like, we're not going to even give you what you've been waiting for this whole season, you know? Yeah. It's, we're yeah. going to leave it there and you're going to have to deal with it. Um, yeah. I guess to kind of talk about that, like you've been a part of the show for, for the last two seasons. What's it, what is it like kind of one after these two seasons, all the, the work put in and two, being able to step back and go, all right, that's the journey for this character. Um, I mean, it's kind of, it's, it's surreal, you know, um, especially because there was so much time in between the first and the second season, Yeah, you know, you don't usually have that much time. I mean, it was already taking a long time to get, uh, greenlit for the second season. I'm not going to go into, you know, all the <laughs> yeah. contracts that, that was happening and the Netflix and the other companies trying to, you know, but, uh, yeah, it, you know, there was a lot of, um, business stuff that was happening. Um, mm -hmm. to get it and then when we finally got it greenlit and then they had to write it and then they um and then we were just about to or we started shooting for like two weeks and then COVID happened and then you know another like yeah that's that's back. crazy you know so um to just be kind of to be finishing it with the second season is it's uh it's satisfying you know it feels like there is like a really I, at least certainly with Spears, I'm really satisfied with the the journey he had, the, the mm -hmm. um, arc of the character. I, you know, I remember when John told me that, uh, you know, spoiler, you know, Spears was going to meet his maker. And that's literally how he put it. He's like, well, this season you're going to meet your maker. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. Dad? <laughs> yeah, I was like, damn. <laughs> uh, but he was just like, but I got you. He was like, it's going to be, it's going to be good. And, and he kind of explained to me what the arc was. And, and, you know, they gave me some like, kind of awesome monologues to do at the end there and uh you know I couldn't ask to go out any better and and you know it feels realistic too it's just kind of like yeah I feel like rarely do you see people in horror movies apocalypse movies zombie genre of just being like I'm done I yeah just, I just like the, the inf <laughs> like an infection that's not the zombie infection being like this is still something you have to deal with you know yeah yeah it's just like I'm you know we we what's especially once he once he sustained the injury and, mm -hmm. and he's going it's just like just take me like um <laughs> like let's, let's I, be have, done. I have I, to say yeah. i have to say I'm, I'm really glad you didn't we didn't have to see you turn yeah it's it's that it, you get this weird especially for a show like black summer which is very 
compartmentalized and very, you're introduced to people, you get as much, you know, contextual information you can, and then you watch them, whether it's, you know, I can't remember her name, the woman in the car in the first season who gets thrown oh, through the windshield. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, so she's the, the you know, the, the, she's part of the group and then the driver and then Christine and then gone like that instant. Yeah. And then when you get a character that does stick around for so long, like Spears, and then they're taken away, it's like, I, you, you gave me nothing to have an attachment towards them. And yet I still grew an attachment as an yeah, audience yeah. member. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. Totally. Um, so yeah, it's it's a satisfying feeling to, <laughs> and I was happy that I didn't have to like, you know, do the zombie thing. I mean, like just as an yeah. actor, you know, you, it must they, seem it must be exhausting to just. Oh man, when I watch those guys, like they're they're going full at yeah. it. I mean, you got to commit, and it's just, yeah. ah, you know, <laughs> and they put make you know hours of makeup, and then they got to yeah. run around. They got to pour blood, like it's like syrup, you know, in yeah. their mouth to make it like drip out and. It's just, I'm like, thank you for not making me do that. <laughs> that was... um, another great thing I love about, particularly in this season, <laughs> is the introduction of so many characters that I, I that you don't see often in zombie fiction and that I love in zombie fiction, like uh, Bobby as Ray or uh, Manuel as Boone. Those are two of my favorite kind of like, you don't see a character like Boone in a zombie show like this where he's very clearly kind of on the verge of losing or already lost his mind. But he's also, he doesn't come off as a threat almost. He's very much like, I would keep him around for the laugh. And then with with uh, Bobby as Ray, this, this compartmentalized military man, which I've never seen in uh, like a group of military guys just going around handling everything like a, like a tactical, you know, scenario and then moving on. Like if they never betrayed each other, they survived the whole thing. You know, yeah, yeah, and then you know, uh, uh, Bashir, what was it like bringing uh, Brathwaite, another one of my favorite types, like the nomadic guy who can just pass through without any confrontation if he if he wanted to? What was it like bringing that character uh, to Black Summer? Um, I mean, definitely, uh, it was intimidating because you know they had a whole full season, mm -hmm. and again, just like the show, like every character, you know. You, you get attached to it, but you don't know exactly, you know, how it's going to be received. And, but once uh, Justin called me up and told me about it when, before I auditioned, he told me what the story was. And once I got the script, you know, I, I definitely took advantage of the fact that number one, our relationship, personal relationship that I have with Justin, but at the same time, bringing that element that, that I thought was missing, which is the person that tries to survive and try to kind of create some kind of a peace Within mm -hmm. all this, you know, one of my biggest themes was forgiveness, in a sense, not only forgiveness of what they've done to you, but to yourself and be at a place where it's almost moment to moment, you know, yeah. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I mean, it was, it was exciting. It was, it was, it was really, really, and especially doing it during COVID and, and, and being by yourself for such a long time and thinking about how he took this journey and finally meets the one person that he feels comfortable to interact with. John talked about the possibility of him being part of his imagination. Yeah, and I was being, actually going to bring up that, that yeah, theory that uh, the guilt yeah. is, he's coming to terms with it all. So it was great to be able to, to touch both sides because it could go either way. You could either go, go, Brathwaite is real, which he is real. He's a real mm -hmm. character within the real world, but yeah. is he real at that moment? So it was so much fun to find moments of like, Okay, uh -huh. am I part of his imagination or am I not? And and funny enough, like watching it a couple more times, I'm like, oh man, that's so dope how he created. Because I remember in the script, he didn't have me shooting at all. Yeah. And I, I was just remember remember Justin, I was like, yo, I need to shoot something because I don't want to make this brother look weak. But <laughs> um, but then if he, they would have took that element out, then it would have been easy for somebody to figure out. Oh yeah. This guy's not real. You guys he never made real. any action. He never impact. made action exactly. But yeah. if you saw how he shot it, Justin shoots forward, and then I'm shooting on a totally different. I was like, oh, yeah. he's so smart. Mm -hmm. John is so smart. So it was a lot of fun. It was, and, there, and there's a lot of there's a lot of angles too where it's uh, 
Brathwaite is in the is in the background, kind of it's like a yep. blurred out in the background, almost like he's just like in my in, in his ear. <laughs> could go either yeah. way, you know. Um, but I, I mean, for me as as the actor, it was it was I I liked him being my imagination. You know, it it helped me with the journey of him, kind mm -hmm. of because by episode seven, I feel like Spears is he's not quite as far as Boone, but he's mm -hmm. he's cracked a little. You well, know? yeah, that's that's what's so uh, what's so interesting is that you have you know Spears who we're introducing him so abruptly, and we have so many questions about money and about he's being held by like how much has he done that he's being held by like military officers or is it at this point is it just they're just dispatching everyone all like that and you have this well, kind the question of is, are they are those actual military? Yeah, exactly. Well, could they? That's the best part is when uh, Rose uh, uh, it, uh, embraces you in the end, like she thinks that you're this military guy, that the entire concept of identity is thrown all mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. because it, it, at this point, you know, you who who really is who, you know, you, you change so differently, you can change in an instant, like Spears, who takes on this identity of uh, someone in the Like when you squeeze through that crowded door because you, just because you have the 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 camouflage on it's it's just it's such a great interesting part not to mention the whole concept of what you whether breath rate was was real or not the the pale horse in the end that that you guys both kind of walk towards mm -hmm. symbolizing the death of 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 breath the the death that uh spears has kind of embraced like my, my journey has gotten to this point after like so many night shots of like rain and around the fire and then that like nice day where the rain is kind of settled and the horse is at the end of the lake or the the stream that was that was much that was a very relieving kind of thing for for the character it felt like mm -hmm. yeah and also re relieving what you just said identity like the the what are we holding on to as far as identity you know especially yeah. in a world where things is totally different now and that's why you know i really loved brathway because poses those questions and that's why like it's funny i see people are playing bygones bygones yeah and it's like it's like yeah because you, you where else would you have a chance to actually let go of everything not only let go it just doesn't make any sense anymore whether the money yeah. all of that doesn't doesn't matter anymore and who are we really and the know? embodiment of brathwaite being like i'm i've been hanging out i mean been hanging out with this guy that basically thought he killed me yeah. And that's the epitome of bygones is like, you're there, you're sitting around a fire, you're sharing a drink. And I love that, that nut allergy. That's like the, the coolest little piece of character info that I think that you never hear about. Like the infection of the bullet, the nut allergy, other things can kill you other than the zombies. And that's zombies. what I love what the show tackles. Yeah. Um, yeah uh, right. So, yeah, yeah. No, totally. And on to the, and also to piggyback on the bygones thing, you know, I, that for me, I mean, that, that's the, I mean, that's basically what Spears' journey was for me for this entire season, you know, I mean, especially once Rose ditches him, old mm -hmm. Spears would be like, well, she's, she's going to get popped. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, you know, you betrayed me and it's him grappling with all, all of that. And then to carry it into, you know, I mean, episode five and we have that big conversation and then bygone, do we let it go? And then that huge kind of like argument in the rain of like, what would you do? What would you do? You exactly. Know? And, and then to end on episode seven and, and when me and Rose have that exchange and all I can say is bygones, that's like, you know, it's the, the entirety of, of the thing. So it's almost, I mean, what's so crazy about the beginning, the first five minutes alone of this season is like, oh, yeah. I, we know that guy, and then he's gone. Yeah. Which is like, I'm so surprised it's taken his character this long to die, and something so simple, like just getting, I never would have pulled over. You learn in this show, you cannot pull over for people, you cannot, as much as it's like, even if they have a baby that's a sick baby, we saw the school in that first season, and they're all they're all children of the corn type shit. You can't deal with that anymore, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so to have him instantly gone and it be for nothing, they crash the car anyways. And then to be like, oh, this is the group, you know, you have, you have son, you have Spears, you have Rose and, and then boom, Rose is like, I got to take care of my daughter and dips. And it's like, holy shit. Like it really is 
not only just like all out for yourself, but you can't have any kind of attachments, which is why I think Brathwaite's and Spears comes off so jovial and so much like uh, genuinely like like two brothers walking through dealing with the with the with the apocalypse, like chilling and, and, and sitting around the fire and telling old stories about growing up. Like that's something that this show hasn't hasn't come across. So it was really a, a breath of fresh air. And it, yeah, exactly. It allowed it to breathe, you know, because the first four, you're like, yeah, man, I thought I was, I, I had to stop a little bit, drink some water. I'm like, man, I need a drink. Yeah. And we were to drink. We were that, that drink exactly. that you just go, oof, man, that was a long journey, wasn't it? <laughs> you yeah. know, so it, it's, it's, it's kind of cool that, you know, and it's also how brilliant the whole entire team is. To, to puzzle it that way and to make it exactly such a beautiful journey you know and of course there's some people you know they're just like ah, you know i don't really get it but if you allow yourself to just follow just the journey alone the emotional journey alone you'll understand oh wow everything is there for a reason it's not there's nothing that's there just because oh it's just fun or they just yeah. wanted to exploit something but it's more like every single shot every single scene everything is connected yeah. which is rare yeah you can yeah you can really go back and pick apart this thing and and you know there's a lot of people who, who like call out different things and you're like oh you weren't paying attention that's yeah. explained or that's actually for this reason you know there's that's so another that thing coming. my favorite aspect is the way that the story kind of unfolds it's you, you're it's i watched the first season with my dad which was a mistake because he's not <laughs> he's not able to pick on he's like we saw those guys, but they died earlier. And now they're fighting a group of guys that we saw get, you know, together earlier. And then later, that's what I love about the way the story unfolds is so everything, even as the, the most obscure thing is connected. Like uh, before we, we even see Rose in the first episode, we get that sniper shot, the guy running away from the, the zombie. And then four episodes later, we see those two guys in the ambulance and mm -hmm. that's all connected. And it's really it almost rewards the the viewer. Like if you are paying attention, you know, you'll recognize the jacket of somebody or or what specifically they're doing and stuff like that. Or even just the sound design. Actually, I just did this other panel interview of uh, like all the, like the guy who was in charge of doing all the sound, all the background, all the noises. Mm -hmm. And even just like in that first episode, you know, the, the young girl uh, gets hit by the car. It was like the first yeah. one to turn. And if you, notice in my like when I come on the screen and they throw me in the couch and I'm talking to the guard you can hear in the background yeah. the car hitting her and yeah. then the screaming and the chase and all that stuff just all in the background there you know it's, it's as connected it's, as the neighborhood is connected literally you have yeah. like if you're in your home watching something you would hear shit outside and then you get that point of view that's the that's my favorite yeah. thing about the show is how interconnected it is and how it, it doesn't as much as it, there, there are moments where you're like, what happens next? It definitely pays off. It definitely yeah. ends up ends up paying off. If like, uh, Sherlock, if you're a Sherlock Holmes viewer, it, this is yeah. heaven for you. If you like solving puzzles, you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> or like, after, after, after you die, and we, we from what, from what we can see throughout that episode, uh, Anna looks like she's kind of tipping a little bit. She has that. That like, that like brutally unsettling moment where she sees her reflection. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think about it in that case, like being someone that young in mm -hmm. such a situation, you're walking around with like a, a rifle or a shotgun and you see yourself and you kind of, there's that identity thing of like, think about children now on phones pr projecting their identities. Think about this, this, this child looking at herself and looking at like kind of what she's turning into and then being surrounded by actual monsters. So having that moment of just, like intense in the yeah, that's an intense in, moment yeah that was that that i'm watching that i'm like is that's just got to be a way to expel everything because rose is like i was a, i was amazed at how much rose was like oh, thank god for that shower i was like take a shower you guys have been walking around it's that looks off and then you still think about like she's just young enough to be like is this what life is going to be like you know, mm -hmm. this is that what, age. I mean, that that four, 13, 14, 14, you know, that's when you're exactly discovering yourself. And and I know John's his concept is she's a child of war. You know, you, you see, so, you know, young kids, unfortunately, you know, in, in third world countries or where, where you, you know, where they get kind of in, uh, indoctrinated into 
you know, uh, armies or militias or whatever. Yeah, and so radicalized was, from, radicalized. from such a young age. Yeah, and he was like, that's what this is, you know. And um, I think that's just a great way. And then you have that moment where she's kind of straying from the path where she's talking back to her mom. Mm -hmm. And that make me, I was like, there are so many other things. Please focus, just focus for a little bit. You're at the plane, just look around. And, and it, it's so, yeah. it's so much fun, but so anxiety inducing. Also like the, the entire, the way the show is filmed, all the hidden cuts. And it, it's such a maneuvering kind of momentum. And it's, it's so smooth. So when, when Anna killed you and we walk in and we're like, oh shit, did she, did she get the jump on him? Did she do it without him knowing? And then when we see that acceptance, that's such a great character payoff. So uh, yeah, I think that was definitely one of the, the highlights of the show. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, kudos to, uh, to Zoe who plays Anna. She did Absolutely. a incredible job. You know, I was, I was so impressed with her. Um, when One, when we shot that scene. And then two, when I uh, watched the episode, because I, I didn't, I wasn't there when she was shooting like the reflection part and mm -hmm. then all the, her creeping around. I mean, she was just so incredible. She's only 14, 15. Yeah. I mean, she's, she's going to be such an amazing, I mean, she already is an amazing actress, but I'm excited to see what she does, you know, yeah. as an adult. <laughs> you know? um, uh, one thing I, I, yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. One thing that I, I appreciate appreciate about the character of Brathwaite is that he he does, real or not, he centers this character that we've kind of had very like, you know, uh, uh, shallow information on. You know, when it comes to Spears, whether we know that there's a, a, a sum of money, we know that uh, you're you're much more of like the character really kind of gets colder because you're a real like good smartass in the beginning with the with the guys who got you. It's like really great when you go to the to the bathroom and you have the handcuffed and. It's just, you can tell who this person was before everything. And then after yeah. all this, you have that, that character kind of whip change. What was it like, Bashir, kind of centering uh, this character with, with all this uh, contextual information? Well, just, just the history alone. I mean, just once I knew, once it, uh, John told me like, oh, he's from your past. And, and also like, you know, knowing the information about the money and all that wonderful stuff. It, Again, it's just bringing back the, the simple humanity of it. And it was so much fun to mess around because I went in with the aspect of, I knew the whole time. And it was just a matter of when am I gonna tell him? Especially, oh, that's, I, especially in the rain scene. The rain scene, yeah. I, it's literally me going, you know, should I, yeah. am I, I'm <laughs> giving you a chance here. I'm giving you a chance and, you know, and then I get disappointed. So that's why, like the ending, it's it's it, it, a lot of people are, are reacting to it because, you know, it, it's it was such a needed needed situation for for Spears, I think, you know, and also for for Brathwaite, whether if he's imaginary or not, but if they were to do another season where they kind of show the past or whatever, or if mm -hmm. they ever bring that character, uh, at least you'll have something to grasp on. You know, yeah. what I'm saying? if they were ever to do a, a season three or whatever, and and they decide to bring him back, I'm like, oh wow! At least I have an entire story, and also you kind of get an uh, what kind of a character he is, <laughs> or do you? You know, which is kind of cool too, because yeah. then it's like, oh, if he's part of his uh, mind, uh, maybe there's yeah. other stuff that we don't know about him, but you know, who knows? Yeah, but and there are several know. times, and I think what you know. Uh, I mean, I think Bashir did such a phenomenal job with that character. I mean, you know, such a delicate balance of, of the, cause he's so humorous, you know, but how mm -hmm. do you use humor into this deadly serious uh, world, which, which is not easy, you know? And, and I, one of my favorite descriptions, I, I wish I, I hope the, the script for episode five gets leaked cause it was so beautifully written. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I mean, me and Bashir audition for a lot of things. We read a lot of scripts and I mean, am I right? Is that not like one of the better scripts you, you. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, but one of my favorite things that you, when it describes Br Brathwaite, when he first comes up, it says, um, it says something like a guy that doesn't quite fit this world. Mm -hmm. you know and and i thought bashir captured that so perfectly just like he's like why is this guy so kind of like jovial humorous yeah. he's, got, he's got jokes like we're 
kicking it on the stoop. You know what I mean? Like it's a normal Thursday. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, you know, like my favorite thing, even just him talking about like sex, you know, be like, oh, didn't you used to uh, get with Big Lita? <laughs> yeah, you did get with Big Lita. You know, like just those little moments, you know, it's like, it, it makes it so, I mean, like Bashir said, it's, it's the, uh, it's the humanity of it, you know, it's like these are, it's those little details that give it texture, like you said, like the peanut allergy, or, you know, getting with Big Lita, or, you know, all these tiny little things, or when we, when we talk about the sandwich, you know, uh, and how, oh mm -hmm. man, remember that sandwich, um, yeah, it just, it just humanizes these people, especially someone like uh, Spears, who yeah. just feels like this tough, can't, no, nobody hurt him, but exactly. he's got a peanut allergy. You know. Exactly. It's it's yeah. like it's uh, it's such a great way to ground a character. Two characters, one that we that we don't know much about, but we've been watching several hours of, and right. then another another that uh, really feels removed from everything. He feels like, well, that's what I love about the nomadic characters. Like, oh, I would have killed to hear more about the the homeless guy with the with the dog in the end of season one. Right. Like yeah. that is the yeah. shit. Just walking through, avoiding sh when you don't have to deal with it, and then keep moving. And then that's that's the life. You got a dog. You got you got you the weapon you need, and that's it. So that was just the coolest uh, step away. And that's what I love about this episode in particular is because as much as I imagine, I was like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as much as uh, the the show is compartmentalized in, in so many of these chapters, which I, I love the way that it it unfolds this episode of one moment leading to the next chronologically and we're, and we're, we're kind of, we're, we're learning and we're growing at the same time. We're seeing this, this bond grow, like in, in, in a time where can friendships like that even happen? Like that first thing you did that my, my favorite thing was like, you offered the water and my head was like, don't drink it. And then you drank it yourself to prove that it was good. I was like, okay, good. Now you can have some, like right. the, the, the distrust that this show breeds so when you meet someone who genuinely comes off like, well, like when you mentioned Sixth Street and then your eyes change, right. like there's something there and I want to know so much about it, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, totally. I mean, I, I you know, honestly, I, you know, not, not, hopefully, I don't think I'm being biased, but I, I could see this show going on forever, <laughs> you oh, know, yeah. and not, not, not even with like the characters that are on it now with Rose. Yeah, and, exactly. Like, you, all you have to do is just switch perspectives yep. and there's somebody's story who's incredibly interesting, you know, that you just have to follow and see what happens, you know? Like the guy with the dog, I need to see that. Like, yeah. that Seriously, like that was the like, coolest. The way he did it too. He just, yeah, exactly. And walked away. For the, for the quickest second, oh, when, I, when, when I saw Spears looking over himself at that hill, I was like, is that him? No, I feel, it, it doesn't seem like they would, retouch on that this yeah. show is very much kind of like if you missed it you missed it moving on you know so uh yeah, yeah that was just yeah. so great yeah another I mean, thing i think john i oh go ahead no no you you i have a whole other I, was just, I was just gonna say you know i know john um he he has three he says he sees three chapters three mm -hmm seasons you know um so i mean i'm i'm really hoping netflix gives him a third one because i just want to see you know what his vision is for the entire thing you know and let him kind of finish yeah. the arc but then even then you know i i think then he can hand it over to somebody else and then we can go in even further into you know different characters for you know you can go to a different that's what that's another thing i love about this season is the different as much as it's, it's somehow the same people all from kind of like the same neighborhood in this in, in this new uh mountain landscape and you know you you never see what zombies have to go through like different temperatures and how much of a of a of a pro it is to like have a house on a flat plane you can see 360 and it's snowing mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. and that's it that's all that's that's like such a great uh uh pinpoint to have as a group of characters yeah. but you can 100 percent go to like nevada yeah and a whole other group of different people and explore those lives and then bounce off and Mm -hmm. uh yeah that's the that's the that's the highlight of the show even the details of like the costumes i remember you know john uh, especially for the second season he was like i don't want it to look like some cool western you know i don't want mm -hmm. everyone to be kind of in these like you know earth tones and like yeah. leathers or whatever he was like the reality is you would be 
taking clothes out of a car if you saw it scrounging for anything you know, scrounging for anything especially once it started getting cold you would mm -hmm. raid a target you know and like if you see you know my my bright blue jacket is a uh, is a pizza delivery jacket you know yeah. <laughs> and it's it's you know he wanted it to and then he also wanted these colors to contrast and pop on the on the snow you know which i yeah. just thought was so cinematically brilliant you know you get yeah. these oranges and blues and reds or whatever just like on the white then touching on the uh, the appearances of everything, I love that. So time has passed in season one, and it's reflected in this in the change of the seasons. But it's reflected in the people. You know, everyone. You wouldn't be able to unless you had a mach like a, you wouldn't be able to cut your hair or shave your beard or yeah. or, or take a shower. So uh, that's the oh, that's the one thing I love is that Rose somehow was able to get this badass chopped haircut, and everyone else is like. <laughs> all unkempt and like they got leaves and they got to walk through and you can tell like you can't smell anything but you know it fucking stinks probably so that's what i love is you have that 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 rolling kind of existing world built off even just you know character appearance yeah oh yeah i mean john called me in like uh i think it was like october you know we were supposed to start shooting in february before covid and he was just like don't cut anything <laughs> Uh, 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 you know, I, I hadn't ever not shaven for six or seven months. You know? Oh my god! Yeah, and then and then we, yeah, and then and then COVID happened. And then it was like another six or seven months, and I was like, well, I don't know. You know, I didn't know because when we first shut down, they were like, oh yeah, we'll be back in like two weeks. Yeah, you know? that's what everyone thought. Knew. Yeah, yeah. I kept waiting. I kept thinking we were, we were going to go, so I didn't cut anything. My poor wife was just like, "Oh," <laughs> you know. And uh, and then I find, and when I got back to set, um, when we finally started shooting in September, I mean, my thing, my stuff was like, I had a, a gigantic afro, and, and John was like, "Maybe that, maybe that's too much. Maybe we'll yeah. take it down a little bit." <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's a little yeah. too much. Yeah. Um. So uh, one thing I'm always fascinated by is just the atmosphere of. Of a, of a production, let alone, you know, a regular production, a zombie production, there's, there's such an intensity to everything. So what was it like, uh, like, like, uh, what was your favorite day on set? And what was your favorite scene between the two of you, uh, in your episode to shoot? Oh, I guarantee you we, right. One. No, you go, I've been talking the, too much. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, well, of course the fire scene is, is, is great but uh i mean all of them man I, I i thought i mean the first scene was exciting for so many reasons for personal reasons you know because i got a chance to work with my best friend you know and so it was so exciting and i remember the first thing we shot was the introduction the introduction with the bottle and uh and i remember just going like wow this is this is actually happening i remember feeling so much joy at that moment and going okay this is really this is really happening and it's either gonna be great or it's gonna fail horribly and then and then but the you know once we did the fire scene was really cool as well too because we've done a scene like this in class like like it was just like it was so many elements that are outside of our you know power to to be able to be in a in a netflix show two great friends and doing such incredible material. Um, for me, all the experiences was very personal to me, yeah. you know, uh, which made it such a joy and, and which made it easy too. Cause you know, you get to work with somebody that you're so comfortable with. So it made it very, very easy for me to, to, to be that free and be able to do the things that I do. Yeah. And not to mention that we, we also got the luxury of um, having the script for, for, seven eight months rehearsing and you know like you hear about like someone like I don't know, daniel day lewis or leo you know getting getting <laughs> yeah. they, they worked on the role for a year but for for us smaller actors you know you usually get a script a week and you're like be ready monday and like oh, oh, wow <laughs> you know and that's you gotta be to you have gotta, a, a script like this where you guys have to kind of you, you basically or especially around the fire scene. I, I love, and I'm so frustrated by that scene because why, the realist in me is like, I would never get drunk unless I was in like a locked box away from anything ever again. It's so exposed. 
and to to inebriate yourself to the point where like you guys when you guys were fighting each other, I was like, someone's gonna slip and break their neck. That's what this show is gonna do. They're gonna someone's gonna slip, and we're never gonna hear from them again. And then we're gonna move on, take the chocolate oh, and bar, and that's gonna be it. And they kill each other. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. I, I know. Even that's isn't that crazy that even the simplest thing like getting drunk can put you on edge, right? You're, yeah. you're like, oh, what's gonna happen? These idiots, yeah. like, what are they doing? You know, I mean, I, I was thinking that too, but my justification is they're at a real effort point. Yeah. <laughs> you know, one, That's and then how it comes also off. just like, you know, if, if you're starving, you know, at the very least, alcohol has a little bit of calories, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. you know, or, or, or anything. Bit. Anything. Huh? I mean, I mean, anything, anything that you're you, you're able to consume, even especially just memory wise, like, even if you're yeah. thirsty as hell and somebody's like, oh, man, I got a beer. You're going to be like, oh, great. Not even yeah. you're not thinking about, oh, this is alcohol and my calories and <laughs> I might be. And you're like, man, I got something to do. I'm not eating the stuff. Consume, yeah. I'm just consuming something. And then yeah. by the time you realize it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, um, and, and it, yeah, it was the breathe, And also it was the breather that we needed like i think if zombies would have came right in between the fire thing we would have been like yeah. <laughs> you know, not so bad we, right which we're gonna try but <laughs> i probably would have offered them some drinks that's the best thing about these zombies is that at least they Look, make some man. noise yeah. that's the best thing about these zombies yeah. is at least they make some noise so now you, you can yeah. keep an eye out <laughs> yeah no, um, totally. Now, one thing I definitely wanted to talk about, because as soon as I saw this shit, I thought to myself, I know relatives of mine who would be doing what is happening right now. And it's when you guys walk into the fucking suicide pack cult. I knew, and, and yeah. you said that some white people shit. And I was like, yes, because I know I have family members who would like walk around like on that guy on the horse with the skulls. And I'm like, that is some real, I would rather a zombie than that fucking danger. That's like real human danger, distance yourself. And when you walk into that house and all the, like before the camera panned out, I was like, I see some shit on the walls panning all the way around. And you see that one guy just sitting there, like I've been waiting for instant. I love that Spears didn't even wait to be yeah. like, what's going on? I've been waiting, bam, done. Get that shit over with. And then Brathwaite throwing up in the background I was like, I mean, to have this top, to have this follow like a drunk night, that's got to be incredibly difficult as a person to come across. It, it was scary. I mean, it, it was very eerie shooting it. Uh, you remember? I was just like, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, we had, they had they had act, they had actor flies. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> they, had, they literally had flies. Like, go act. <laughs> flies flying around and stuff. <laughs> it was pretty cool. I was like, oh my god! They got like supplies of flies for for this scene. This is pretty dope. <laughs> but but it was it was so eerie, man. It was like it kind of it. it, it it could mess you up. I remember um, Justin telling me after he shot the first season, he was like, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. I'm a little messed up because the, the makeup artist does such an incredible job. The designer, everybody does such an incredible job. You truly are not acting. You're more reacting to reality. It's no CGI. Like mm -hmm. you're seeing there were live bodies. I mean, they were alive, but they're laying there and then the, just the imagery itself yeah. It does something to you. It's some like, that's man. some intense shit, man. Yeah. And that brother, that brother that was sitting on that chair, man, even outside, <laughs> I can't even look at him outside. I was like, I don't know, man. <laughs> and he was talking to me like, yeah, this is gonna be great. I'm, I'm oh my god, for it. I'm yeah. excited. And I was like, yeah. all right, man, this is cool. I'm gonna go. Gonna, you don't want to <laughs> catch him around the corner. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that was that was just so intense. It, it definitely messes with your mind a little. I remember, I remember in the first season there's this scene <laughs> where is, is the um, the high scene when we're getting all the guns from the yeah. you know, layer or whatever. And that scene where I'm, the, the zombies are chasing me and a couple other people, I run up the stairs to try to get out and yeah. I'm supposed to turn around and then just in time for, to see them tackle a, the couple people behind me. And, you know, and they have fake stuff that the, the actors are like, the zombie actors are like pulling, you know, but when they turn around, the camera's behind me I'm really seeing these yeah. zombies who are made up amazingly with the blood and, and they're pulling stuff. And then they're all supposed to like, look at me, you know, just, you know, you're just like, I I clocked it. And I was just like, 
Ooh, that's going to get yeah. a knife. That's, that's, <laughs> like, that's, you, as much as it's like, I imagine, I mean, imagine it's like as much as you're, you know, it's a performance, the, yeah. the, the electricity of the scene kind of has you move it. Like the scene of, of sun in the, in the vent with the guy, yeah. just, just at her toes. Like, in, I wouldn't even, I would shut down and just, I don't, even if it's a performance, I would just like, this is, this is too much. Like the claustrophobia, the, the limited movement, having to crawl through, that's yeah. got to add some like, Oh, it does. Stick with you. Yeah, I mean, just the, like Bashir said, the imagery alone. I mean, it looks so real. You know, I mean, your your eyes don't know any different. Your mind might be like, okay, we're we're performing, we're playing, yeah. but but the visuals of it is like this is some intense stuff. You know, um, so yeah, it's it was you know, and and that's that last scene um, in the house was was eerie and and. For me, that's the moment where Spears snaps. Mm -hmm. Like when he when he shoots dude in the head, he's done. You know, I think he's he's had enough. <laughs> you know, I think like that's, that's it. Yeah. That's, I, for me, that's when Spears makes the decision. I don't want to do this anymore. You, you, don't, know? Want be, you don't want to be in this world. Not, I don't want to be in this world. world. And, and, you know, even for somebody who is, you know, tough and cold blooded and from the streets, like you have a, a limit. Of of death and destruction, any person. Yeah. Uh, just close, you know, uh, you know, point blank range of just shooting that dude in the head. All these mm -hmm. bodies laying around. It was just like, what are we doing here? <laughs> you know, yeah. like, I'm I'm done with this. You know, at and, some point, the, the the human spirit is 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 super heavy, <laughs> yeah, and it can't yeah. carry that much. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. Absolutely. Um, and just to kind of bounce on that guy riding the horse with the skulls on it. The fuck was that? Was he part of the cult? That's the old. That's my. You guys know something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting some good looks. That was, I loved so much about that was just because it was such a in a show where like the zombies are an infection, but like the 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 primal fear of something like. Like like the fucking headless horseman walking around collecting skulls or whatever. That was just such a a whole new brand of, especially after two seasons of something so kind of medical, you know. Mm -hmm. who, who who else collects souls? Oh well, yeah, it could be death just walking around. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's some good shit. Right there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, well, this has been awesome, you guys. Thank you so much for. Uh, for lending lending me your time, I know that you. I know that Justin, you have a, a talk later. Uh, yeah, I do. I, yeah, yeah. I, I almost forgot about it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've okay. just been. Oh wait, I do. I do. I've, been, I've been picking up on. I've been trying to pick up on everything, you know. Uh, yeah. but yeah, this has been so cool. Thank you so much for for uh for doing this. If you want to leave like your Twitter and Instagram for everybody. Uh, is just my name, just you carry. Yeah, right. mine, mine is the same, Bashir Sylvain, B-E-C-H-I-R, not B-A. Um, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, if you want to follow the podcast, you can go to uh, Spotify and Apple Podcasts at How's it, going to, How's it Going to End. You can go to YouTube, Comedian Cinema, and subscribe there. That's where I'm going to have the video up. And uh, that's pretty much it. Cool, man. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure. And thank you. Thank you guys so much for doing this. This is so fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> have a good one. Thank you.